Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from the US Women's Championship. It's uh, Carissa Yip versus Tatev Abrahamian. A lot of you guys have requested this one. Not this game specifically, you requested me to show uh, a game by Carissa Yip. She won the US Women's Chess Championship uh, one uh, round, uh, well with one round to the spare. Uh, and it's uh, definitely an incredible achievement. And it was not easy to choose a game to show because all of her games are really uh, fierce attacking games. Uh, most of them very short, so you guys will enjoy uh, pretty much all of them pick any and you know just to go through it uh, that you will have to do on your own but this is the one that i chose um, uh, she's playing against the women international uh, grandmaster tatev abrahamian uh, and it's really um, a really cool game and it features a really cool pause the video moment that i'm sure you guys will enjoy so without further ado let's check it out and we're gonna uh, show the well her, her, her score in in the tournament uh, after we check out the game uh, so uh, uh, Carissa with the white pieces opens with e4. We have uh, e6 by Abrahamian going for the French defense. We have d4, d5 and uh, Carissa advances the e5 pawn going for the advanced variation of the French. Uh, we have c5 striking in the center and now c3. So very, very standard stuff. Knight to c6 and now knight to f3, the pulse and attack. Uh, and the queen to b6. And this is um, uh, very standard when you go for this line of the French. And it's very annoying if you're unfamiliar with it because because black is putting so much pressure towards that d4 pawn and you are unclear on how to continue here because well if you play something like bishop to d3 then the queen no longer defends the d4 pawn so black could just capture it you can't play bishop to e3 because then queen captures on b2 so i'm sure you guys had this many time uh, on the board uh, when you played against the french and you were just like what what do i do here and you were too lazy to check after the game so i'm just gonna tell you here you can play bishop to d3 as this is what carissa played in the game and give up the d4 for pawn but not really because after c captures on d4 uh, you don't have to give up the pawn you could just capture back the pawn can never be captured because after knight captures queen captures bishop b5 check wins the black queen so uh, your pawn is never in any actual danger uh, but here uh, carissa just uh, castles and she offers the the pawn here so really making it a pawn sacrifice now you could do this knight captures on c3 it's perfectly fine uh, but maybe not uh, give white um, so much development uh, especially as uh, Carissa here is known to be a fierce attacker. So instead, after castles with bishop to d7, continuing development, and now rook to e1, adding another defender here. Uh, but also putting the rook on the uh, on the e file that the king uh, still occupies. So knight g to e7, the knight can now come to, to, to f5 or g6, and we have the immediate h4. So now if knight g6, we can always just kick it away with h5, and uh, for the moment knight f5 is ill-advised because we are definitely capturing this to uh, really mess up uh, black spawn structure. So here we have a6 and now h5, grabbing more space on the king's side, uh, and uh, there... Uh, is a game that uh, reached this exact same position where g6 was played. It was in the game Mamed of Marcoa from the uh, FIDE online, not FIDE, from the online Olympiad. Uh, is it a FIDE online Olympiad? I have no idea. Uh, I'm sh I know it's some Olympiad, but uh, let me just quickly check. Is it the... Uh, yeah, it's just the online Olympiad. I, I imagine it's the FIDE Olympiad. Uh, no, it's the, it's the chess.com. Uh, Olympiad, so sorry about that. Yeah, uh, but regardless, the, the position is known, and this is the move that was played. But here we have h6, and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So this is where our game truly begins. So here we have queen to e2, uh, nicely developing the queen, uh, and uh, here comes f5. You could go for d captures on c3 now, and here it might even make sense. Uh, maybe after d captures on c3, uh, you're gonna have to capture with the b pawn. Maybe capturing with the knight is now a bit too optimistic because then knight to d4 could be a problem so it's it's perhaps in the position but okay here we have f5 now hoping that uh, the, the, this stays intact of course uh, if white captures al passant could be very dangerous uh, but this is exactly what white goes for e captures on f6 al passant and now g captures on f6 and it looks very shaky uh, but if there's nothing here for white then black just has a beautiful center here and uh, not a worry in the world. You also have the uh, semi-open G file to use for attacking. Uh, you might shift the knight, bring the bishop to c6. Uh, obviously not that arrow, chess.com. Uh, but uh, yeah, there is a, a lot of attacking potential for black here as well. But here we have c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, knight captures, queen captures, and now bishop to e3. So white uh, in the end is down a pawn, uh, but uh, get some development for it. And here we have queen to e5 
Uh, this is uh, perhaps a bit uh, too dangerous. Queen to h4, on the other hand, uh, is very, very strong. Uh, the thing is, white's plan is to play bishop c5, eliminate the knight, and play bishop to g6 check. And this would really cripple the black king. But here, after bishop to c5, you can simply play rook to c8. For the moment, you don't care about this, because in this position, it doesn't really work. Captures, captures, bishop to g6 check. You can move the king, and the position is fine for black. Black might even be in time for some king to uh, c7 to b8 action, but also the king uh, could, could be just fine here in the center of the board. So not a lot to worry about here for black. But instead, queen the e5 was played and this gives uh, white um, a lot more uh, a lot more space you know to to uh, do some stuff so knight to d2 trying to offer the the b2 pawn but of course grabbing that pawn now uh, when none of your pieces are uh, really developed uh, runs into a lot of trouble for example here you'd <laughs> you'd uh, this would be met with knight to c4 and this is now really crazy uh, going for knight to d6 check and especially if the queens uh, get traded off the board then just knight to d6 check king to d8 and bishop to b6 is checkmate a beautiful knight and bishop checkmate where you don't even care about the black queen so this is uh, uh you know in the position if uh, if you're not careful so here we have rook to g8 like we said we really want this bishop on c6 going after this g2 pawn and now f4 uh, we have to kick away the the black queen uh, queen to d6 and now queen to f2 again we're trying to get that bishop to c5 move in the queen will move we're gonna pick up the knight and then we're gonna play bishop to g6 check now it definitely makes sense to block this rook's uh, reach to uh, towards the g2 pawn so rook to c8 black stops this now controls the c5 square sufficiently and now rook a to d1 here knight to b3 also a nice continuation you really want to fight for that c5 square but rook a to d1 in the spirit of uh, adolf anderson uh really uh makes sense because now the king is in the center the rooks are on a1 and e1 and this uh well uh, more often than not, uh, uh, accomplishes a lot in chess. Uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, one such example. So here you really have to play something like f5. Uh, you have to, uh, I'm not going to tell you why you have to play f5, but it, it's for a very good reason. Uh, instead, uh, black played bishop to c6. Now finally putting the bishop on this diagonal. So once you advance this pawn, it could be uh, very dangerous. Uh, but uh, now feel free to pause the video and try to figure out the reason why I chose this game to show you from all the others. Uh, you know, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, uh, miraculous idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, Bishop to H7. That's the good stuff. Yes, uh, it, it looks like a move that does nothing uh, because I'm sure you guys are asking yourselves, OK, Rook G7 and what happens? Well, uh, what happens is that the bishop is no longer on the D file. And that's the idea. We want to move the bishop away from the D file with tempo. That's why we attack the rook. We couldn't just move it to B1 because there's no threat here. Black has to waste the move moving the rook. Otherwise, we're just going to pick up that rook. So here, knight to E4. And now you can see that the queen is attacked, but also the F6 pawn. Uh, and the F6 pawn cannot be defended. Uh, the, the E5 square is covered by the pawn so you have to move the queen queen to c7 was played and now uh, knight captures on f6 is perfectly fine this comes with check but uh, uh, carissa plays bishop to b6 she wants uh, to get in one more useful move because before playing this knight captures on f6 uh, but of course now black doesn't allow this uh, i mean it would just be uh a pointless to, to play a game like this so black tries the only thing that's left and that's to give up the queen for two pieces so here we have d captures on e4 bishop captures on c7 and now rook captures on h7 so bishop to d6 uh, white is now winning but of course uh, white still has to work for his meal that's why maybe capturing on f6 right away with check uh, would be uh, a, a bit quicker but uh you know no no one's uh, in any uh, hurry here so rook back to g7 again we really want to open up this diagonal and uh, start attacking the white king and now rook to c1 so now of course if a move like e3 is played it looks very very dangerous but we can capture this and now what do you play well uh, you could play rook captures on g2 with check but after king f1 there is really no good continuation here for black. I mean, you are attacking, but you don't have all that many pieces to attack with. And white already has a threat. White can pick up the bishop and then pick up the rook. So it's, uh, you know, not the maybe the 
the greatest uh, of ideas even though it seems like yeah this is you know completely crushing uh so instead we have knight to f5 attacking the bishop so bishop captures here king captures and now rook captures on e4 of course now the bishop cannot capture as the rook on c8 is hanging so rook to d8 now threatening to pick up the rook and now we simply uh, eliminate this rook now of course we don't allow rook captures here so rook captures on c6 b captures and now rook captures on e6 going after this pawn so knight to g3 uh not uh, not uh, going for this pawn but going for some uh, counter-attacking chances now if uh, you do nothing then uh, something like rook to d1 check king h2 and rook to h1 might be checkmate as the rook uh, on uh, g7 is guarding the knight on g3 however after rook captures on f6 check king to e7 uh, we have queen to c5 check and this is the uh, really just a beautiful finishing uh, touch uh, now the king doesn't really have any squares you could capture the rook but of course we all know uh, wh <laughs> where that ends uh, you guys have seen the thumbnail uh, so if uh, king e8 uh, we're just gonna play queen to f8 to check and now we're gonna pick up this rook so of course completely winning for white uh, so instead king captures on f6 was played but now just queen to e5 check king to f7 you have to guard this rook and now queen to c7 check and it was in this position on move 33 that Tateva Barhamian resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here if you move the king here then you lose this rook and if you move the king somewhere else then you lose this rook so you can't uh, keep an eye on uh, on both rooks so really really an impressive game and especially this um uh bishop to h7 move such a uh, such a <laughs> wonderful idea uh and um uh, like i said the game maybe could have uh, uh been a bit different if knight captures on f6 was played but uh, both uh, continuations are winning this one just makes you work for your meal a, a little bit harder so so i don't forget uh, let's just check out uh how she did against uh, some of the other players so here you can see that she started with a draw then a win uh, so this is uh, that we've shown a game uh, a game from round two then a draw then a win against irina crush or the only uh, grandmaster in the in the uh, tournament uh, really uh uh, a weird game uh, where uh, Irina just uh, blundered a piece uh, on move 22, I believe. Uh, but, I mean, it, it happens. Uh, then a loss uh, and then five wins in a row. And that's enough. She doesn't even have to play the final round and she still wins the uh, Women's US Championship. So that's uh, incredibly, incredibly impressive. I mean, getting five uh, wins in a row in a, in a tournament of your peers is, uh, I mean that's something that's something Caruana does uh, when, when he has a good tournament so really congratulations uh and uh, very very impressive stuff uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys uh, enjoyed it uh, i would like to wish a very happy birthday to Tsukswang uh, and uh, to danush uh, hope you guys uh, you know have a really awesome day and spend it with some friends you know don't just uh, play chess all day uh, and i would like to thank jonathan turak charles karen and david farney for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon continuing the coverage of the u.s chess championship checking up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world uh, so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day